As an entrepreneur, the single most important decision that you make in your business is choosing your market. It's a decision that has implications over everything else that you do going forward. It's like this. Choosing your market is like choosing the right river to be in to get to your destination. You can have the absolute best crew in the world. You can have world-class equipment. But if you've placed your boat in the wrong river, or worse yet, if the river that you've chosen doesn't have any water at all, you're not gonna make it to your destination. Hi, my name is Ryan Levesque, author of the number one national best-selling book, Ask. It's a book that sold over 100,000 copies worldwide, and it's been published in a dozen different languages. In that book, I tell the story of how I entered 23 different markets successfully. Markets ranging from memory improvement, golf instruction, and even teaching people how to make Scrabble tile jewelry, to markets like business funding, satellite TV, and even selling high-end water filtration equipment. The reason why I share this with you is that the methodology to choose your market is one that's been tested. It's been stress tested. It's one that's been used by thousands of entrepreneurs around the world. Now, the ask method assumes that you've already chosen your market. But in this training, you're gonna discover how to choose the next market for your business. In other words, we're gonna cover what you do before you ask. The process that we're gonna go through together is a green light process. And what that means is every decision that you have along the way comes with a green light, yellow light, or red light. What that means is we're gonna go through a quantitative, almost scientific process that's gonna help you identify if the market you're thinking of going into is one that you should actually pursue. So with every decision along the way, if you get a green light, it means it's a go. If you get a yellow light, it means proceed with caution. And if you get a red light, what that means is you wanna stop and start over perhaps exploring a new market or modifying the market that you're thinking of going into. Now, there are three main phases to this approach that we're gonna be going through together. Market, competition, and traffic. In each of these phases, we're gonna be analyzing the market itself. We're gonna be taking a look at the competition in the market, and we're gonna look at the availability of traffic. In other words, are there ways to reach people in the market that you're thinking of going into? This is gonna take us to a point where you're gonna be left with ideally your top three possible markets. And then we're gonna go through one final step together, which is demand analysis. Demand analysis is we look at these top three markets and we compare the relative unmet demand in each of these three. In other words, which market demonstrates that there is unmet demand, that people want something that doesn't yet exist? And that's gonna leave you with your market for your next business. Now, along the way, we're going to go through an actual real life example, an actual market that I use this approach to choose my market. And the market that I've chosen is the orchid care market. Now, the reason why I chose this market is simple. It's a business that using this exact approach that you're going to go through, I was able to take from nothing to $25,000 a month in just 18 months, and then later go to over half a million dollars a year. Now, the reason why I chose this market is because if you can generate a half a million dollars a year teaching people how to care for your orchids, then chances are, if you follow this process, the market that you're thinking of going into is one that you'll be able to have success with as well. So let's dive in, starting with the first phase in the process, market analysis. Whenever I talk about orchid care, people often say, orchids, really? How did you choose that market? Is it a market that you are passionate about? or you choose it for other reasons. Well, what you're about to discover through this process is that choosing a market that hits the right benchmarks, in other words, a green light market, is far more important than choosing a market that you are passionate about. Orchids fit exactly in this situation. Orchid care was one of many markets that I had brainstormed when I was first going through this process when choosing that market. Now, when you're thinking about what market to go into, there's a few guidelines that you want to be thinking about. One of them is, what are your resources that are available to you? In other words, the problem that you're intending on solving, the need that you're intending on meeting in your market, is it a billion dollar problem? Is it a million dollar problem? Or is it a thousand dollar problem? Listen, unless you're Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, or Jeff Bezos, then chances are you do not want to approach a billion or even million dollar problem. That is, unless you have millions of dollars of funding available at your disposal. 
Instead, what you want to do is choose something that is much smaller and more narrow in focus. As the saying goes, there are riches in niches. And what you're looking for is an inch wide, mile deep problem. Orchid Care fit the bill. And as we go through this process together, you're going to see why Orchid Care checked off all the boxes and was a green light market. Now, before we dive right in, if you're wondering, well, where do you begin? We've provided a resource for you 101 niche markets to help you brainstorm possible markets that you might want to go into. From this list, you can make your own list and go through this process together with me as you explore the market you're possibly considering and thinking if it may be one to enter. We're going to kick things off with the first phase in the process, which is market analysis. Let's dive right in. So when I say inch wide, mile deep, what do I mean exactly? Well, let's take the orchid care market as an example. When we talk about orchid care, we're talking about serving orchid enthusiasts, as in people who grow and take care of the flower. Now, when you think about that extremely narrow segment of people, think about how deep you can go in serving that group of people. We can sell information, teaching people how to care for their orchids. We can sell supplies like fertilizer and potting material. We can sell the orchids themselves. We can sell things like orchid jewelry made of actual flowers to sell to people who are passionate about this topic. We can sell things like greenhouses and even excursions, trips around the world to Southeast Asia and South America to tour some of the most obscure and hard to find orchids around the world. See how we went so deep serving this inch wide audience? When we say inch wide, mile deep, this is what you're looking for. The first phase in analyzing the market that you're thinking about going into is actually analyzing the market itself, what we call market analysis. Now, the goal at the end of this phase is to have a green light market, a market that based on the market analysis is one that you should consider moving on to the next step, which is competitive analysis. But let's focus here on market analysis. When it comes to analyzing your market, the most important thing that I found in my experience is making sure your market has and meets the criteria what we call the five market must-haves. These are five critical criteria that every market that I've gone into that's been a monster success has checked off these boxes. So let's go through these five market must-haves one by one. The first market must have is what we call finding an enthusiast market. So what is an enthusiast market? Well, enthusiast market is a way to describe some markets in contrast to problem solution markets. It's best explained through an example. An example of an enthusiast market would be the dog market. Why is it an enthusiast market? It's an enthusiast market because people want to hear about this topic over and over again for months and months, if not years and years. Think about dog owners. Dog owners have all sorts of different things that they purchase for their dogs. Everything from dog food to leashes to dog bowls, even Christmas ornaments and paintings of their pet that they put on the wall. Now, compare that to a problem solution market, like for example, mold removal. If you have mold in your home, this is a problem that you want to solve and never have to think about ever again. Compared to the dog market, it's a much more challenging type of market to go into. Because in the mold market, you've got one shot, just one chance to transform that person from a non-customer into a customer. Whereas in the dog market, if you don't sell to that person right away, chances are you'll be able to sell something else to that person at some point down the road. So now that we've looked at a enthusiast market and compared it to a problem solution market, let's take a look at our litmus test, the orchid care market. Is this a market that ticks the box? Well, when you think about orchid care, we're talking about a group of enthusiasts. These are people who are passionate about orchids. These are people who oftentimes have two, three, four, maybe a dozen plants around their home, and they want more every single year. These are people who read books about orchids. They watch DVD documentaries about orchids. They may belong to a local orchid club and orchid society. They may take trips around the world and visit different orchid displays at museums and different events. So orchid care enthusiasts, this is a perfect example of an enthusiast market in action. 
So when you opt for an enthusiast market, you can have a customer for life. Which means all things being equal, you want to opt for an enthusiast market as opposed to a problem solution market. The next market must have, market must have number two, is choosing what we call an evergreen market. An evergreen market means that the market that you've chosen is timeless. It's a market that people have been in 100 years ago, and chances are they'll be in this market 100 years from now. Things like marriage, fly fishing, are great examples of markets that are timeless, that are evergreen. Now compare that to a market like iPhone 4S screen repair. That's a market, even as I say this right now, sounds dated, because it is. But if you made that your market, if you made a decision to go in that market, what you've done is you've chosen to go into a fad or a temporary market. I made this mistake myself when I went into the Scrabble tile jewelry market of all things. I built an early business teaching people how to make jewelry combining Scrabble tiles and origami paper. When I went into this market, I thought I hit pay dirt. Fad markets often appear that way. There was a ton of demand. People were buying this jewelry up in crazy, crazy volume. But what I didn't realize is that just like Beanie Babies, Tickle Me Elmo, Scrabble Tile Jewelry was just a fad. It was something that came and went. And while it was a business that I was able to take from nothing to six figures very quickly, even more quickly, it went back down to zero. Now compare Scrabble Tile Jewelry to orchid care. Orchids have been a hobby for people for hundreds of years. In fact, the oldest and most popular hobby in the United States, any guesses on what it is? It's gardening. And when you think about niches within gardening, you think about specific plants that people might really enjoy. Orchids are one of these plants. Now what's great about orchids, as you start going deep into this world, is that you realize that orchids can live for hundreds of years. They're one of the oldest organisms on the planet. There are over 80,000 orchid species around the world, and they've been around since the time of the dinosaurs. They live forever. People pass their orchids down to their children and grandchildren. So you can see now how orchid care starts to make up the definition of an evergreen market. The technology may change, fertilizer options may evolve over time, but when it's all said and done, what we're looking at is a flower, a flower that will be here for the test of time. So orchid care is a perfect example of an evergreen market, just like markets like dog training, fly fishing, and as I mentioned, marriage. Having a healthy relationship with your spouse, that is a fundamental human desire. And it's one that's likely to be around for hundreds of years from now. So, when you're looking at your market, you wanna compare and ask yourself, is this a fad or is this an evergreen market that's gonna stand the test of time? And all things being equal, you want an evergreen market for your market.